Some might say that the president is becoming extra paranoia, but to his security team, these measures are simply sound protocols. Ensuring the safety of the nation's leader requires a thorough and proactive approach, especially in public spaces where risks can emerge at any moment. In situations like this, the president's safety isn't just a priority, it is an unwavering mandate. Everything else is secondary at this time. At the recent swearing-in ceremony of Deputy President Kindiki at KICC, the layered security was undeniable. The president's team left no stone unturned, mobilizing an impressive array of defenses. Armored vehicles were strategically placed around the venue's entrances and perimeter, creating a fortified environment. Rooftops weren't left unattended. Ava Sniper's team took up positions ready to neutralize any potential threat from above. And then there was the deployment of elite units from specialized police branches. A collective presence designed not just for general crowd safety, but primarily to protect the Commander-in-Chief, President William Ruto. One maneuver in particular left on Lucas both impressed and bewildered, a last-minute route change. While journalists, security officers and protocol teams waited expectantly at the main entry point where the president was originally supposed to pass, they were caught off guard as he and his team opted for an, an alternative path to the dyers. And this decision left the media and some protocol staff momentarily disoriented, but from a security perspective, it was a calculated, brilliant move to keep adversaries guessing, maintaining an element of unpredictability that's essential for a leader's safety in a volatile setting. The dignitaries entered through the main KICC entrance, where organizers meticulously laid out a red carpet as both a symbolic and practical route. Extending from the entrance to the back of the stage, at this point the carpet split into two directions. One branch led to the right side of the dais, designed or rather designated for the Deputy President Kindiki and other key dignitaries, while the other branch veered left, intended for the Chief of Defense Forces Charles Kahariri and his military commanders. Initially, this left side path was meant for President William Ruto, so journalists and protocol officers gathered at KICC, expecting him to follow this route. However, just as protocol waited with bated breath, the president made a surprise move. 
he appeared from the far left side of the dais, an unexpected entry that left journalists and staff murmuring, trying to piece together the last minute shift. <laughs> So this is where the president was supposed to, uh, to come through. Uh, this is the entry that he was supposed to come through, right? He was supposed to come through the Kenya International Conference Convention Center through this huge gate right here. And then, due to last minute security, you know, changes, the president came through the other, you see where these men in suits are? He came through that, you know, that entrance. We thought that it's gonna, you know, use the red carpet and, you know, go to the right side where you can see the word keep left. We're supposed to use that, you know, that side. But last minute security changes dictated that uh, you should use the other side. I do not know why the president has decided to, you know, to change, uh, you know, protocol changes last minute. It's only the men in uniform who know why. Tumkaribishe Rais wa Jamhuri ya Kenya wakiwa pamoja na Mama Reche Ruto First Lady of the Republic of Kenya Karibu sana Mheshimiwa Rais Now this change wasn't simply a whim. It is a strategic deviation that hints at adaptive security measures Presidential security teams often make such adjustments to outmaneuver any potential threats that may arise in pre-established pathways. Yeah, we believe in our constitution. As President William Ruto addressed the nation, his bodyguards were positioned with a military precision around the dais, each wearing the unmistakable black suits and communication devices essential to their role. Now the subtle glances, the quiet exchange of signals, they were not merely observing. They were cataloging every individual close to the president, evaluating potential threats and maintaining vigilance. It's elaborate. Our manifesto is transformative. We are implementing it page by page, paragraph by paragraph, chapter by chapter, because we have to transform this great nation and failure is not unfortunate. We must. Here. The about we have a big program on rural electrification to connect close to 300,000 homes across Kenya. I need your support to the Minister of Energy, who are doing a wonderful job. Now this formation is a critical shield designed to intercept any threat before it reaches within the striking distance of the president. Now some might argue that President William Ruto isn't supposed to use the normal entry point where other people are using. That is why he chose a different route. Yet after delivering his speech, he exited the dais through the same path as other dignitaries were using at this point. Now, as he stepped down, the presidential motorcade waited just a few meters away, ready for immediate deployment. Now, the president paused briefly to greet his new deputy president before boarding his vehicle. But his security team didn't allow him even a second of idle time. Within two minutes, the entire motorcade had moved, with the officers swiftly pushing back by standards, clearing a secure path for the president's exit. Now, this swift departure illustrates the security team's protocol of reducing time spent in exposed areas to minimize risks. Hey, come to Yuma. Thank you. 
Now, this is not the first time that the president comes with such security maneuvers. A similar approach was witnessed during the Mashuja Day celebrations in Kwale County. While some may perceive this heightened alertness as unwarranted, security professionals understand it differently. Each adjustment, each route deviation reflects a proactive strategy to stay one step ahead of potential threats. In the realms of VIP security, paranoia isn't a flaw. It is a layer of defense. Every maneuver is an affirmation of a core principle. The president's safety is paramount and every possible precaution will be taken to ensure it. You can call it paranoia, but the presidential security team, they call it, you know, security alertness. <laughs>